Hello, everybody, and welcome to Base Paths and Brewskies. Today is episode 16, Red Birds, Dead Birds. The Brewers traveled down to St. Louis to take on the Cardinals, and it was a fun one for the Brewer fans. Let's jump right into this one, starting off with the BP. Today we have the Leinenkugels Honey Weiss Beer, real Wisconsin honey included. Um, not I haven't had too many lining kugels. I've had some summer shandy stuff, but other than that, I've never had this honey one. So let's give it a try. Ooh, ooh, I really like that. Ooh, all right, I'm gonna have to get some more of these. That's pretty good. I know that when I was going to buy this today, I just bought one of them so that I could obviously have something for the episode tonight but the guy was saying that they have like a good grapefruit one at the store he was saying they had a good grapefruit one so i'm gonna have to try that one too i think here soon anyway let's jump right in game one it was two to one brewers beating the cardinals uh kind of a really close game good pitching duel we had Brady on the mound i'll kind of spoil it a little bit he was one of my craft brew player of the games uh, fastball Freddy. He went six strong, um, just giving up four hits, two walks, no runs, seven strikeouts. I mean, just working the fastball, striking guys out. Uh, I just remember specifically off the top of my head, striking out, I believe it was Brendan Donovan and it was just a high fastball and he just waved at it and just looked kind of silly doing it. And I mean, that's what Freddie does. He just throws fastballs right by guys. Doesn't have like crazy high velocity or anything. I mean, it, 94 to 97 sometimes he touches like that's pretty good but we have guys that throw a lot harder on the team and they get you know they don't have the success freddie does which he he's just been balling out this year so exciting to see um obviously the rest of the pitching staff did a great job just giving up one run it was trevor mcgill who gave that up i don't exactly remember how that run was scored excuse me um but, yeah, yeah, I don't really remember exactly what happened with that one. Um, kind of was zoned out probably by then. But it looks like it was in the sixth or seventh inning, or seventh, or, yeah, seventh inning, I guess, seventh or eighth. Um, but obviously, like, Piamps uh, came in, got the win. Um, he did blow the save, it looks like. Huh. Yeah, I don't know how this is this box score is working out, but Piamps got credited with the win. Hobie Milner with the save first on the year. Was that his first of his career? I know. I thought I saw something about that. It was definitely his first of the year. Um, but obviously having a lefty like Hobie, who isn't like a huge flame throwing left-hander, kind of like a Josh Hader type, um, to have him come in and be able to operate the way he does as a pitcher is pretty incredible. Oh yeah. His first save of his career. So congrats to Hobie. Um, and it's really cool seeing him get back on track a little bit. He got knocked around to start the year. Uh, he had a really good series this series, and it was, it was really fun to see. Uh, came and shut it down in extra innings, which was really nice. Um, obviously, oh, that's right. It, it, it was the ninth inning run. It was in the top of the ninth inning. Um, Cardinals scored, and... Yeah, and then we ended up scoring in extra innings. It was William Contreras with the two RBI day, basically putting the team on his back a little bit and uh, fighting off his brother Wilson, kind of put in, giving the upper hand to him, to uh, William in this one and throughout the whole series. And I'll, I obviously wanted to touch on William as well, knocking in our only two runs. I think they both came on just base hits. I don't think it was anything too crazy, but he had another just excellent series. Uh, in game two, he got, I don't know if he was robbed of a home run. I don't know if it would have gone over, but the Cardinals center fielder that day, uh, um, Ciotti, I believe his name is Ciani, excuse me. Um, he ended up jumping up and having an incredible play at the wall, saved extra bases, at least if not a home run uh, from Will William, but overall just a great series from him. Uh, really team looked Real solid throughout this entire series. And this one was just a great pitching performance from the guys. Another good outing from Paguero. Uh, McGill was solid in almost two innings, really just giving up that one run in the ninth. Um, 
probably could have seen Piumps come in a little sooner, but whatever. And yeah, overall, overall pretty good, pretty good game from these guys. Twelve to five on Saturday. Um, that was a fun one to watch. I mean, they just kind of smoked um, the Cardinals. It really wasn't even close to start the game. It, it you know, it looked like it was going to be competitive, high scoring game after a, a you know a pitching pitching duel shutout type performances the night before obviously no shout out from either team but a very low scoring uh, but this one was 12 to 5 player of the game was jackson Chorio hitting another home run i believe his fourth of the season um and he ended up giving us the leading run it made it five to four early in the game and from that on we never really looked back uh took big leads everyone was hitting pretty much i mean not one player in the starting lineup and well no one got subbed in so everyone got a hit. Even Gary Sanchez, two hits from Gary. Um, sorry to make an impact there. I think he had a nice hit to left center. I don't know if he ended up making it to second for a double, but I thought he did. Oh, excuse me. Making me burp a lot. Um, but yeah, really just good offensive game from everyone in this one. Uh, it, 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 everyone flying around the base paths, making plays in the field. Blake Perkins, I mean, that dude's a freaking baller. Uh, he was hitting Bryce Terang, the two-run home run that knocked in Perkins, I believe. Um, yeah, this this was a good series. Bryce Terang, you know, when Perkins got on base, it was, I believe the score was 4-2, to two, Cardinals leading. I don't know what inning it was, maybe the fourth, third or fourth, maybe the fifth. And Perkins got on base. I don't know if he stole a base or if he was at second with a double to start. And Terang, it almost looked like it would have been a time for him to bunt. He chooses not to bunt and ends up hitting a home run. Uh, ties the game 4-4. Four to four. Chorio comes up, gives us the 5-4 lead. And for, again, from then we never turned back. Uh, DL Hall, disappointing kind of performance again. I know I referenced before the slow start to Corbin Burns' career as a starter, so obviously we have to give D.L. Hall some time. And he is on the injured list with, I believe, a knee injury, 15-day injured list. Um, he did look just kind of off, looked uncomfortable. He had like a 40-pitch second inning that ended up giving up a lot of runs. Um, you know, he walked five guys. That's really been one of his bigger issues on the year is just the free passes. And... You know, I, I think against Baltimore, it got covered up a little bit because it seemed like he was just kind of getting some unlucky bounces, unlucky hits against him. But or I believe that was Baltimore. Yeah. And, you know, this one, though, it kind of he got exposed a little bit. And the ERA is starting to inflate even as he's getting more innings under his belt, which is usually not a good sign. Um, but then after him, I mean, the bullpen came in and pretty much shut everything down. Thiago Vieira gave up a run in the end, but but at, at that time it was 12 to four. Game was pretty much getting turned off on every TV. Um, there was no real comeback in sight. We hit the ball well. Shout out to that Siani playing center field for the Cardinals. He went up and had a nice play, um, pulling a ball down in center field, robbing Contreras of at least a couple RBI. Um, so he made a nice play, but even even the, with that, William was still three for six, had an RBI, uh, scored two runs himself. So just a really fun offensive game to watch uh, for the guys. So moving on to game three today, two nothing, a little boring, uh, kind of a typical Colin Ray start. I wouldn't describe many of his starts as being you know thrilling, but three walks, five hits. He got out of some trouble early. I, thought it was the second or third inning he kind of ran into a little speed bump after that he was you know cruising pretty smoothly no runs given up today it's kind of been his uh his motto this season of not giving up pretty much anything a 2.08 era very solid um offensively not a ton going on um uh, owen miller <laughs> came in delivered two rbi today to give us our only two runs and obviously another team shutout. Great to see. Shout out to Brian Hudson came in. He ended up getting credited with the win. Had four strikeouts. Um, Hudson came from, I believe he was from Southern Illinois, kind of out by St. Louis. Uh, my friend uh, from my last school, his name's Cole. He's from that area. Shout out Cole. 
um cold vasectomy as i refer to him as has a funny last name um anyway <laughs> anyway so kind of beat up on the cardinals a little bit and it was probably fun for him to get to go pitch back in the stadium he hasn't pitched in since high school actually he got to pitch there so it was cool seeing brian hudson go in and throw two and a third and just dominate he's off to a fantastic start on the season with 0.77 era he's looked very shut down i mean as a lefty real tall big dude hard to hit especially just with his release against lefties so he can be kind of a him and hobie being lefty killers it's a lineup full of lefties is going to have a hard time against us so uh, that could come in handy down the road against some of these real good teams, for sure. Oh, other than that, again, not much for the offense. Y'all Piops came in, ended up getting the save again, kind of giving Abner Uribe a little break from these high pressure situations, and I think that's helped him uh, tremendously. Uh, he looks a lot more confident pitching lately, so that's been nice to see. Aguero came in; he's been kind of, you know, electric to watch, and he came in and got a couple outs this game as well. So. That was good to see, and overall, though, just a team shutout, pretty pretty uh, under-the-radar team t- shutout with only eight strikeouts. Uh, we walked only four guys, six hits. Bullpen, once again, was pretty shut down. Um, Sonny Gray, wow, that dude's fun to watch. 12 strikeouts on us today. He has got some stuff. He throws nasty shit that it, <laughs> we, it was hard to hit him, and I mean, his ERA is pretty, pretty, uh, explanatory of how good he's been 1.04 era i don't know if he'd given up a run until today i know today he gave up his first walk of the season so that dude's a stud obviously you look at some of the eras of the guys that came in uh romero kittredge libertor uh, all guys with real low eras as well coming out of the bullpen so this was not some wash you know washed up old staff team like the kind of we kind of expected with the team coming in for the Cardinals. Uh, This was a really good rotation, and I'm glad we got to avoid Lance Lynn and Steven Matz, a couple other real good veteran pitchers that we didn't have to see. So I'm excited to see more matchups down the road with these guys because I think with how our pitching and their pitching comes into these series and matches up, it's going to be really fun to watch. And they have a lot of good young players on that side, uh, you know, on in, in the field for them as well with, Nolan Gorman, who didn't have the greatest series. Uh, Mason Wynn, solid player. Obviously, some veterans like Arenado, Goldschmidt. Uh, Lars Nupar is a very good developed player now. Wilson Contreras, Brendan Donovan. I mean, this is a good lineup, and I'm excited to watch a lot of these series coming down the road. And I think this could be a, a potential battle for the division between these two teams. And obviously, you know, Chicago, Pittsburgh, maybe. Cincinnati, uh, we'll see, but, but yeah, this was a cool series to watch. Um, and I'm excited to see more. And I, I obviously just am not a huge fan of the Cardinals considering they're kind of a rival of the Brewers. And it was nice to see them sweep them early in the season like this. So shout out to the Brewers. I'm going to take another sip here of the drink. Nice. All right, let's talk a little bit about the series awards. For my BNB MVP, I had Blake Perkins. Uh, whether it's robbing home runs like today, it, early in the game, robbed, I believe, a two run. Maybe it was just a solo. Regardless, a home robbed a home run. Changes the entire outlook of the game going forward because, you know, obviously that it changes the dynamic early on of who's in the lead, who has the momentum. Great play by him. He's been hitting the ball extremely well, uh, just shy of a one dot OPS. Well, let me check. Yeah. Just shy of a one dot OPS to start this year. I think he's hit safely in like 13. Oh, excuse me. 11 of 13 games. I think something like that. So he's been playing good. Uh, my barrel blaster, I mean, everyone was kind of hitting, but I just wanted to give Bryce Terang the credit that he deserves for how well he's been hitting the ball. Not not known for being a power guy, but the extra base hits have been coming for him. Doubled and homered on Saturday, which was really nice. To, I believe it was Saturday, which was super nice to see. Um, drove in Perkins, actually, with his home run to tie the game up Saturday and then 
obviously Chorio came and hit the game leading home run, never really looked back from there. My crafty pitcher I wanted to give credit to is Brian Hudson, not only just for this series and the work he put in against his uh, obviously old hometown team, but just how good he's been overall as a lefty. Uh, he's real tall dude, big lanky guy. And he comes in and he kind of just shuts down lefties. Uh, it really shuts down anyone. I mean, 0.77 ERA is good. Whether you're right-handed, left-handed, ambidextrous, it doesn't really matter. That's a good-ass ERA. And he's he's really chucking the ball well to start the year. And I'm hoping that he can stay up for the rest of the season uh, or at least a good chunk of the season, stay healthy and be a solid piece of this bullpen. Speaking of the bullpen, the All Reliable Award for this week's series award has, or this episode, excuse me, series award has gone to the Brewers bullpen for the 2024 season. They have been shut down so far. Uh, great to see. We don't even have our best piece in Devin Williams back yet, but they've been so good and so fun to watch. Uh, everyone from Uribe, Piomps, Milner has started to pick it back up. Peguero's been great to watch. Even Thiago Vieira has been had his good moments. Yoel Piomps starting to kind of bounce back as well from maybe not the most ideal start or the typical Yoel start. We have had let's I mean countless guys throw. McGill has thrown again now after he's back from the concussion list. He's throwing hard again, back doing what he does best. Brian Hudson, Jared Koenig, who actually got called back up for this series, which was nice to see. I was kind of maybe getting a little annoying about that in the last episode because I really just thought he deserved to be on the roster with how good he's been, uh, with how good he pitched in his debut series uh, and then getting sent down right away. It was kind of an interesting development there. But overall, just – and if I forgot anyone, I'm, I'm – didn't mean to sorry Bryce Wilson I mean he's been a starter now for us too so he's pitched great out of the bullpen um I I couldn't be happier with how good this group has been it's so consistent you know what you're going to get from this bullpen and as long as we can be a team that being up two runs going into the sixth seventh inning I mean if we're up two three runs it's it's kind of a lock at this point that we're probably going to take that game. I mean, the bullpen doesn't seem to give up more than one or two runs um, whenever they have a day. I mean, they, we had a, basically a full bullpen day, and they threw a complete game shutout as a, as a group. So that was pretty cool. Um, but, but otherwise, I, I didn't really know where else to go with this award because, I mean, our fielding has been great. Offense has been obviously a little shaky at times with – Two games this series, scoring only two runs, and then 12 in the game two. You know, the little meat and potatoes of the series kind of coming in the middle there with all the runs. But whatever gets it done, as long as, you know, if, if our offense feels like scoring two runs, I hope our pitching can, you know, shut them down to one or less. And that's what's been happening so far. So good to watch. Um, we'll move on here. The BNB Trivia. Last week's answer was Jared Koenig as the thousandth brewer to make an appearance for the team. Again, maybe you're probably sick of me hearing, probably sick of me uh, saying Jared Koenig's name, but I'm just going to keep doing it. So if you want to go back and listen to the last episode and kind of see what I'm talking about, go feel free. Love to get some more views. Also, I just wanted to remind you on Spotify, YouTube, uh, you know, like, subscribe, rate the podcast on Spotify. Um, you can get the post notifications on both, I believe. So turn those on if you're listening. Uh, anything helps. Any, you know, these numbers help. Um, any little like, comment, if you feel like reaching out on anything, the socials below, X, I'm on at Basin Brewski. Twitter, TikTok, I haven't been on as much lately, but Instagram for sure, uh, at Base Paths and Brewskies. Uh, but anyway, today's trivia, after the Brewers' recent series with the Cardinals this weekend, how many times have the St. Louis Birds beaten your Milwaukee Brewers since September 26, 2023? Uh, A, zero, B, zilch, C, nada, or D, absolutely none? Give you a second to think this one through.
Yeah. Yeah, I'll spoil this one. Every answer correct, all of the above. Uh, they haven't beaten us since September 27th, and I'd like to keep adding those days up. Let's, let's see if we can go for a year since being beat by the Cardinals. Let's sweep them this year. Up next, we've got the Pittsburgh Pirates in Pittsburgh. The 11-11 11 and 11 Pirates off to a super hot start at the beginning. I mean, it's still very early, obviously. Only 22 games in for both, for them at least, 20 for us. 14-6, and six, the Brewers travel in after another sweep uh, against the Cardinals. Facing another division foe. Get to see Rowdy Telez. Get to see Andrew McCutcheon. A lot of familiar faces for the Pittsburgh Pirates. If if they're not hurt, I'm not. I'm, I don't keep up on the Pirates. I don't know if they're on the injured list or anything, but hopefully we get to see them face off against them. It's always a good time to get to play some old old Brewers and see them in their new colors or for Andrew McCutcheon, his old colors that are now his new colors again, I guess. I don't know how that works, but anyway, moving on to the B&B beer requests. If you have any beers you've been dying to try, if you have a go-to beer that I need to try, comment or reach out on any of the socials listed below with what I should drink next. Again, shout out to that guy in Festival in the liquor store. Uh, recommended a couple other Lining Kugels. I'll probably try another one for the next episode if I don't stumble upon anything else I'd like to drink. And again, just a reminder, it doesn't have to be beer. Whatever we want to be beer can be beer. Uh, if it's a wine, if it's a liquor, if it's a moonshine, which I've been drinking a lot of lately, well, not like a concerning amount, just a normal amount of moonshine. But or even if it's like a THC drink, I'd love to, you know, try if you I I, I like dabbling in those as well, I, I guess I'll say. Um, so if you have any recommendations for me, I'd love to hear them. Let's get this last sip. And the beer is gone. This podcast is done. Thank you, everybody, and have a good one. Go Brewers.